The rest of the news Thursday. Good morning, Americans. Only three more shopping days left this year. What to buy? My oh my. Let's ask Big Bird. When is the Iowa caucus? Tuesday? We'll finally have it behind us. How long does it take to ride a horse from the Iowa State House to Congress in Washington, D.C.? A lot longer than it takes to push a button on a smartphone. Statistics. Iowa population 17 million. Hogs. 3 million people. It's a state not especially representative of America today. Many pundits now question the importance of its caucus. Maybe it's just because it's the first of the election year that it's number one. Mitt Romney says he wants to put ads on Big Bird to pay for Sesame Street. Well, there goes the neighborhood. The rest of the news research has determined that it takes about two weeks to ride a horse from Des Moines to Washington, D.C. The state of Colorado has asked the federal government to reclassify marijuana a Schedule II drug so doctors can legally prescribe. Capital of Colorado, Denver is the third state to make the request, after Seattle in Washington and Providence in Rhode Island. U2 had the highest-grossing U.S. concert tour of the year at 156 million. Taylor Swift came in second at 97 mil, then Kenny Chesney ahead of Lady Gaga, and at number five, the ever-so-not-dead Bon Jovi. Due to the crummy economy, there are now more American women in school than at work. Guys take whatever lousy job comes along, but women are saying no thanks and furthering their education. Absolutely spectacular northern lights are forecast through New Year's Eve as Earth is about to get hosed by a coronal mass ejection. That's a big geomagnetic storm on the sun happening right now. The two Grail satellites from NASA arrive at the moon New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Imagine that your washing machine and dryer cost $500 million and they are in orbit around the moon. You've got it. The Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, GRAIL satellites, will study the far side and rewrite the evolution of the moon's history and subsurface makeup. This becomes humans' 110th mission to the moon. Jonathan Prince is an athlete an activist who runs for different causes. Like a little run he took from L.A. to New Orleans for Habitat for Humanity after Katrina. Now he is in training at the National Aerospace and Research Center in Southampton, PA, to run a mile on the moon in 2016. He'll need special boots as the surface temperature is over 200 degrees. He plans to get there on a private rocket. Maybe he can get one from Elon Musk, who says his reusable rockets can put 10,000 people on Mars over the next 20 years, eventually millions. More stuff in the sky. Day before yesterday, China flipped the switch on its own GPS system with a name that translates Big Dipper. It's now the third system after the U.S. and Russia. Europe is planning its Galileo GPS for 2014. Back down on Earth, a giant shrimp has been pulled from the Gulf of Mexico, the first Asian tiger prawn fished from those waters. It's over a foot long shrimp and threatens the existence of regular shrimp and oysters and crabs. Have you heard about those methane plumes bubbling up through the shallow waters from the Arctic seafloor off Siberia? Here's the deal. Molecule for molecule, methane traps at least 20 times the heat of carbon dioxide, causing more global warming. We're doomed. John Stewart's Nielsen ratings are up, now outranking Fox News for total viewers at 2.3 million to Fox 1.85. The O'Reilly factor is still ahead at 2.8 million, but going down. Comedy Central says the Daily Show is dominant in its time slot. It's number one. Like the show. Thanks to you. Please come back tomorrow. Proving that someone other than Brian Williams can use the word spectacular in a newscast. This is Dan Earhart. The rest of the news.